Hey there, welcome back to Dr. Doug's Daily Tips for Writing Great LDS Church Music. Today we are looking at hymn 99, Nearer Dear Savior to Thee. Every day I pick a primary song or a hymn and I look for one little gem, one little trick of writing good, powerful music to help you write better primary songs, better hymn arrangements, better word choir pieces, and, and to, to help you along along those paths, okay? So in this particular hymn, what we're going to look at is something called an accented non-chord tone. So let's break that down here for a second. First of all, let's talk about non-chord tone, NCTs. A non-chord tone is also called an embellishing tone meaning it's a note that embellishes the chord or embellishes the texture of the music that you're writing. So some of these are what we call passing tones, where a note passes by step up to another note, but the middle note, da, da, the middle note doesn't fit the chord. It's a non-chord tone. It's a, it's a tone, a note, that doesn't fit the chord at all. And so by taking that note and adding it into the texture, it gives it some freshness. It gives it some uh, a feel of something new, okay? A very common type is what I mentioned, the passing tone, where it just steps from one note up to another one, by like stepping from C to E. So if you're on a C major chord, but the melody goes C, D, E, and the chord doesn't change, D is your non-chord tone because it doesn't fit the C major chord, okay? So we have, there's passing tones and we have escape tones and appoggiaturas and suspensions and pedal tones. And I'll talk about more of these in, in these daily videos, but today I want to I wanna talk about one particular type. And it's when, um, it's actually more about how this non-chord tone is used rhythmically, Okay. Usually what happens is non-chord tones happen between strong beats. So if you're in 4-4, four, four, you might get a non-chord tone on the and of one, like one and two, three, four. That eighth note in between beat one and two is usually where like a passing tone happens or a neighbor tone kind of happens. But other times we accent our non-chord tones by using them on a strong beat. That happens at the very beginning of Nearer Dear Savior to Thee. Listen to how it sounds. That G on Savior, Savior to Thee. That chord, if we zoom way in and we look at that chord, it's the same as uh, it's the same as this chord. So the notes are B flat down here, D right here, F right here, and A flat right here. If we put them in snowman form, which is um, you know, if you just write them up on the staff like this, then it looks like that. Okay, it's voiced as SATB with a different order, but it's the same chord, all right? But on the, the beat before, there's one note different. This G does not fit the B flat, D, F, A flat chord. It's a non-chord tone, okay? It's an embellishing tone. It embellishes the harmony by not belonging and then by quickly belonging. So for just a second, it doesn't belong, and then it resolves to the F which does belong to the chord. Okay, that's how these embellishing tones work, these non-chord tones. However, like I mentioned before, usually they occur between the beat, like on the and of two, or in this case, since we're in 6-8, we have two big beats per measure. We have two dotted quarters per measure, which means we have um, three-eighths for every dotted quarter. So the strong beats are these ones, okay? The, there's two beats per measure, so one, two, three, two, two, three. Those are the strong beats. Well, this particular non-chord tone happens right on strong beat number two in the measure. Therefore, it is an accented non-chord tone. 
Now, this particular type of non-core tone, here's how we figure it out. We ask ourselves the three cosmic questions. Where did I come from? Why am I here? Where will I go after this, right? That's how you decide the name of this type of non-core tone. So let's look at this this um, G right here. Where did it come from? It came from the B flat, and it came from a leap, okay? So we started with, let's make a little list here. We started with one, a leap. Then the non-chord tone itself happened. It leapt to the G. But then how did it resolve? That's the third part. It resolved down by step. Okay? So a leap into a non-chord tone and then stepping out of it. That is what we call an escape tone. And I just said that wrong. I'm sorry. I totally backwards. That is what we call an appoggiatura. Leave it to the dyslexic composer to get them backwards. Okay, appoggiatura is when you leap to a non-chord tone and then you step out of it. Escape tone, by the way, is the exact opposite. You step into a non-chord tone and you leap out of it. Okay, you escape out of it by leaping. So once again, this is an appoggiatura, two P's, two G's, appoggiatura, and I'll talk on other uh, daily shows about what appoggiaturas are. But this is one really fun example. It's an accented non-chord tone. So this happens on the beat, and it gives it that extra zing because it happens rhythmically on a strong beat. Okay, So that is a fun little trick to use in your music. And it's a feature of Near Dear Savior to Thee. In fact, it happens again uh, at the very end in a slightly different way. This one is not an appoggiatura. It's a different kind of non-chord tone, but it's also accented. So the last line we get, take, oh, take and cherish me. <clears throat> this one, the top note, so once again we ask ourselves the three cosmic questions. Where did that D, which does not fit my E flat major chord, where did that come from? Well, it came from the E flat by step, and then it continued by step. So this is what we call PT, a passing tone. This B flat does fit the chord, so it's not a non chord tone. Only that D is the non chord tone. It's a passing tone. But like I said before, usually passing tones happen on weak beats. This one happens on a strong beat, and it sounds strong because it hits rhythmically on a strong beat. So it's an accented passing tone. All right? So two small details in this hymn but they they sound quite strong you can really hear them when you play this is one to hold on to 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 play with in your writing to find if you want this kind of strong resolution feeling well give a strong dissonant note by using a non chord tone on a strong beat and then resolving it afterwards all right that is your daily composing tip for uh for today for writing great lds sacrament media music i hope you enjoyed it come back tomorrow we will look at hymn number 100 see you then